You've probably seen aluminum and steel used side by side in construction, car parts, boats, even kitchenware. But have you ever noticed what happens over time when these two metals are in contact? Weird stains, flaky rust, or dull patches where metal should be smooth? That's corrosion, but not your everyday rust. This is something special that happens when aluminum and steel react with each other, and it can ruin entire structures if not handled right. What's actually going on between these two metals? Let's break it down, right here, on History of Simple Things. First off, what exactly is corrosion? It's the gradual destruction of materials, usually metals, by chemical or electrochemical reactions with their environment. Most of us associate corrosion with rust, the flaky reddish stuff on iron or steel. But corrosion isn't just about rust. Different metals corrode in different ways. Aluminum, for instance, doesn't rust, but it still corrodes. It forms a dull, whitish layer called aluminum oxide. What's interesting about aluminum is that this oxide layer actually protects the metal underneath. It acts like a natural shield, preventing further corrosion. Steel, especially when it's not stainless, doesn't have that luxury. Once it starts rusting, the damage just keeps going deeper. Here's where things get interesting. On their own, aluminum and steel might behave just fine. But when they're physically touching, and especially when moisture is involved, they can start corroding faster. Why? The answer lies in electrochemistry, specifically something called galvanic corrosion. Galvanic corrosion happens when two different metals are in electrical contact in the presence of an electrolyte, like salt water, rain, or even humidity. When this setup happens, one metal becomes the anode and starts corroding while the other becomes the cathode and stays protected. In the case of aluminum and steel, aluminum is the anode and corrodes more quickly. Steel acts as the cathode, basically stealing electrons and staying safe while aluminum takes the hit. Aluminum is much less noble than steel. It's higher up on the galvanic series, which means it's more reactive. That makes it more likely to give up electrons when paired with a more noble metal, like steel. And when it gives up those electrons in the presence of an electrolyte, it starts to break down, aka corrode. In a way, it's like an unbalanced relationship. One metal gets to sit back and stay preserved, while the other sacrifices itself to keep the current flowing. That might be great for steel, but for aluminum, it's a disaster waiting to happen. You might be thinking, where do we even see this in real life? Well, everywhere. Boats often use aluminum hulls and steel hardware. Cars mix aluminum bodies with steel frames. Even window frames and gutters might combine these metals without proper insulation. Ever seen white powdery deposits forming around where a steel screw goes into an aluminum panel? That's galvanic corrosion in action. The aluminum is literally dissolving at the point of contact with the steel. And once it starts, it spreads fast. This kind of corrosion doesn't just look bad, it weakens the material. That's why engineers and builders are so cautious when joining dissimilar metals. It's not just about strength, it's about compatibility. The good news is that galvanic corrosion isn't inevitable. There are several ways to stop or at least slow it way down. One solution is to physically separate the metals. This could mean using plastic washers, rubber gaskets, or even a layer of paint between the two metals. No contact means no electrical connection and no corrosion. Another approach is to remove the electrolyte, basically keep things dry. But that's not always practical especially if the metal will be outside. So moisture control is helpful, but not foolproof. A more advanced option is anodizing the aluminum, 
which thickens that natural oxide layer and makes it more resistant to corrosion. Some people also use sacrificial anodes, like a strip of zinc nearby, which corrodes instead of the aluminum. It's like taking the bullet so the other metals don't have to. And of course, there's always choosing the right metals from the start. Stainless steel, for example, is less reactive and won't cause the same issues with aluminum. But it's more expensive, so it's a balance of cost, durability, and environment. This isn't just academic. Galvanic corrosion can lead to serious structural failures. In the aerospace industry, it's a huge concern. Planes use a lot of aluminum for its lightweight, but they also use steel for strength in certain components. A tiny bit of unchecked corrosion between those materials can cause fatigue cracks or worse. In the marine world, aluminum boats with steel fasteners are notorious for developing weak spots that go unnoticed until a part literally falls off. Same goes for bicycles, railings, bridges, and even household items. And it doesn't happen overnight. That's the sneaky part. Galvanic corrosion is slow and silent, but destructive. When aluminum and steel touch and moisture gets involved, a tiny battery is created. That's galvanic corrosion. And in this battery, aluminum sacrifices itself while steel benefits. It's an electrochemical imbalance that turns good design into future damage if you're not careful. But once you do know, you can work around it. And that's where good design, good engineering, and a little bit of science can go a long way. And when you see a rusty bolt in an aluminum panel, you'll know. It's not just rust, it's science, and a tiny electrical feud between metals. That rusty bolt is part of a galvanic couple, where dissimilar metals trade electrons like enemies in a silent war. Moisture acts as the battleground, accelerating corrosion as the more reactive metal sacrifices itself. So the next time you see metal parts stuck together, on a boat, a car, a bridge, or even your window frame, you'll know what to look for. You'll understand why aluminum and steel don't always play nice and why it matters more than you think. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.